I'm Jacob Soberoff. You are watching HuffPost Live. Nearly one year ago at the Sundance Film Festival, the feature film Middle of Nowhere, a movie that chronicles the devastating effects of incarceration and what it does to a family, was a critical hit, and its director became the first African-American woman to win Best Director at Sundance. Now the film has a lot of Oscar buzz, and not only do those behind the movie want you to go see it when it comes out on Friday, but they're campaigning with the help of participant media to end predatory rates for phone calls from prisons. We'll get into that in a minute. Joining me right now in studio to discuss Middle of Nowhere are Ava DuVernay, the film's director and writer, and Amayatsi Coronaldi, the film star. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I want to also introduce, joining us by Google Hangout, our Stephen Renderos, a national organizer for Media Action Grassroots Network in New York City, Alex Friedman from Prison Legal News in Nashville, Tennessee, Amir Varakama, an ex-felon student and social activist in New York City, and Bethany Frazier, a loan officer in Maryland whose husband is incarcerated. Welcome to all of you guys as well. Thank you. How did Middle of Nowhere come about? You wrote this film, too. Um, was this... Was this a story that you would want to tell for, for a personal reason, or you know, why did you decide to do this movie? You know, I've always been really fascinated by and felt a connection to women um, in the circumstance. Growing up in Compton, Linwood area of, uh, of LA, I saw a lot of it, you know. Um, everybody knows someone who's locked up in that community, and so uh, unfortunately the incarceration rates are disproportionate in black and brown communities, and it was something that um, I had never seen portrayed cinematically. I thought for a long time that I might make and explore it as a documentary. Um, and then as I started writing the love story of Ruby and Derek, I thought this might be a beautiful way to really humanize uh, these relationships and it kind of is a stew of ideas from there. Let's talk about what the actual issue is that we're talking about in the movie, which is, which is incarceration. Yes. Um, the man you're with in the film is incarcerated. Um, we meet you guys and we see the strain that it puts on the family. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a look at this uh, infographic from Participant. Um, it's called family, Families Paying the Price to High Cost of Prison Phone Calls, Who's Affected When Someone Goes to Prison? Let's just go through some of the stats quickly. Uh, the families of 2.2 million people are currently incarcerated in the United States. 2.7 million children have at least one parent in prison. Uh, more than half of prisoners with children live more than 100 miles away. 10% of them live more than 500 miles away. So Amir, uh, tell Amayatsi and Ava your, uh, your personal story. Uh, I would love for you to, uh, to share your story with us. Well, I was incarcerated for almost two decades under New York's Rockefeller drug laws. Um, I'm basically guilty by association. And what I found out during my time being incarcerated that the criminal justice system itself is definitely criminal. The way they have the phone system in New York State, um, every year the cutbacks is given to New York's Department of Correctional Services. When they found out they was getting an $8 million cutback, all of a sudden the rates kept going up, 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 in which the average cutback was about 18 to $21 million a year in New York State. So what this did to my family members, especially my mother that was with me all this time, she was paying four, five, six hundred dollars $600, uh, $700 just for the phone bill every month. And this was one of the part of the contributors that helped my mother lose her house. It takes the resources out of the poor and disenfranchised communities and make them even more in dire straits. Uh, what happens here in New York State, as we see, is a picture that goes all across the country. Is Amir's story one that you've heard before? Absolutely. And what the brother is talking about is just the fact that incarceration is big business. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, the Center for Media, Media Justice is uh, an organization that uh, participant and take part kind of brought into the process yeah. of the firm to really to understand the, the stats and really get underneath them. It's a $350 million plus business just on the phone calls. You know, when you think about incarceration and you think about uh, one man who's incarcerated and the mother, the sister, the wife, the daughter, or all the people in the family, the multiple and multiple, multiple of multiple millions of people going yeah. through this, the money that is being made, private companies not going back to the community, it's really criminal, like you said. And so the film, you know, it's a beautiful love story for folks that just want to see, you know, this gorgeous woman and, and some hot guys. And it's, their performances are wonderful. And they're amazing. But, you know, underneath it, we're really, you know, just saying something about the fabric of these communities that are being kind of, you know, the threads that are being pulled out. It's already estimated that one person being incarcerated would be 55000 a year, rough estimate in New York City. I mean, New York State. I say... We can put just a fraction of that money that is allocated into incarceration back into those communities that are disenfranchised and especially into education. The criminal justice system would shrink 
like within 10 years because more people will be working and this will help everybody in society. What we're trying to do here in New York City, working with the campaign and the new Jim Crow, we're trying to tell everybody that incarceration not only affects those communities, but it affects everybody in the greater right. society.